name, let me welcome all of you here this evening for the first of our 2012-2013 lectures. Uh, we have a pretty exciting series of lectures to look forward to. November is the next one. We're going to skip December. You all have lots of things to do, uh, although we will have our annual Christmas party. And then we'll have lectures in January, February, March, April, and May. Um, so, uh, again, thank you all for attending. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time introducing Paul Zaharisov to you. I think he is well known to everyone in this room. The topic tonight is absolutely fascinating. Uh, the work that his grandfather did uh, and, uh, uh, and the work that Halsey has done to perpetuate that tradition. So without further ado, let me introduce Halsey Harrisoff, a founder of this museum, a member of our board of directors, and a mainstay in our future. Thank you. Thank you, Daya. Thank you very much, Daya. And uh, it's a pleasure to be working with somebody that's named Halsey. Uh, actually, we're cousins, but the fact we both have uh, that name, I think I've, is that done now? The fact we both have that name is unrelated because um, he comes down a slightly different branch than I do, so um, it's just a coincidence. I'm pleased to uh, be able to bring to you some uh, facets of the skills and methods of my grandfather. I didn't know him directly because I was less than, I was only about five years old when he passed on, but I feel I know him pretty well through a lot of association working with my father on boat projects. Because I think my father had many of the same uh, attributes of character, straightforward, definite, good work ethic, and uh, I think the personality of my father was in, in many ways similar, so that uh, I figure I know Captain Nat through knowing Sidney. I've been uh, asked principally to explain some of the details of how he designed the boats, and for that reason I brought along a couple of half models, and I'm even going to, uh, at some point in this uh, program, um, play with some of the tools that we use in making models. And then at the end of the evening, we've set it up that uh, curator John Palmieri and I will um, host uh, several groups of you at the model room itself, which will give me a chance to explain uh, right on the scene of where the work was done a little more about the details and also be a good chance to take some questions. So at the end of the lecture, we'll divide you into three different groups that Maggie's worked out and uh, look forward to hosting you up there. Before I get into the, uh, the details of his design techniques, I think it's worthwhile even for an audience like you all who know a lot about the background, I think it's worthwhile just to give a, a capsule of uh, Captain Nat's upbringing and perhaps uh, a chance to allude to the ways in which he became uh, such a genius in his work uh, designing and building yachts. You know, when he was born in 1848, there wasn't much yachting in America. That was three years before the actual beginning of the America's Cup, and yet from uh, 1893 to 1920, he would go on to totally dominate the Cup with um, six defenses. He um, lived in the house that's now part of the property of the museum, and in those days there was no uh, DEM or CRMC or government to tell you what you couldn't do. So uh, my grandfather and his brother and other siblings just walked across the street and started to build boats. There were nine children in the family of which he was a part, and uh, they were all quite remarkable people. One of them, James, was a very famous inventor. He um, worked hard. Uh, made a lot of success, retired at the age of 40, 
and spent the rest of his life traveling all around and lived to be 96. When he was young, James uh, uh, terrified this town by building what was really, uh, you could think of as being one of the first motorcycles.